The Superintendent's Informational Committee meeting uh, for April 4th, 2016. We can start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, special reports with Dr. Harris, please. Hi, right, first we have from IU7 update, Mr. Leonard. Good evening, board and audience. Um, I have a brief report. <clears throat> Basically, there's a lot of activity at the IU number seven. In addition to the governor having flatline funding for early intervention in the budget, uh, there's a lot of other financial issues that are causing a lot of changes to transpire up there. Um, there'd be some uh, teacher movement, furloughs, transfers of entities, issues going on, potential furlough pool being developed to uh, help with the disposition and, and relocation of those teachers. And uh, all the districts could be feeling the impact, but we're not sure about that. Otherwise, everything's moving along up there, and I think a lot of things are going in a positive direction with some new management and new, uh, new changes. And, well, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, we're attacked. Mr. Braschusi is not here this evening, so we can maybe get an update next week. And that's all we have for special reports. Okay, uh, uh, prior to the board meeting, we held an executive session, uh, and we discussed personnel, real estate, litigation, and disputed claims, and received information from the superintendent. Uh, we'll move right into information and give it back to Dr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Stabler. Um, first, I'm going to call up Carrie Hetcher because we have some student athletes we want to recognize. It's been a great sports season this year. We have a couple more to recognize. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Um, I, tonight, I brought in a few people that I'd like you all to meet. Um, first and foremost, uh, I want to bring up my coaches, uh, Mr. Babick and Mr. Ginther. You guys want to come up? We not only have some special for you tonight of WPIL and PIAA wrestling and diving champions, but it's also the second time for both of these young men. Um, Two different. Cam, Joey, come on up, guys. I'm going to let the coaches say a little something about uh, Mr. Ginther. You want to go first? Yeah, um, Cam had a great, great year. Um, as you know, he won. The state title as a freshman two years ago. Last year as a sophomore, he made it to the finals again and lost a tough one-point match in the state finals last year. Got determined, came out this year and finished his season with, season with a perfect record of 37-0. and Won every tournament we went to. Capped it off with a great state tournament with a 9-1 to decision in the state finals. So he was really uncontested most of the year. He's currently ranked uh, number one in the country at his weight class. And uh, we're excited to get them for another year. Thank you. 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 What's your weight? 145. 145. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. I don't know if that's true or not, but I like to think so. Cam was also voted the outstanding wrestler for the WPIA championship the week prior to the state tournament. It's a pretty great feat. Okay, and I'd like to introduce again to you uh, Joey Ferentz. Uh, Joey is the defending Whippeal champion and defending state champion, and he was able to defend both of those championships this year, despite his uh, having uh, a severe medical condition just weeks before those competitions. He was able to recover quickly, um, and he dominated once again the Whippeal championship and went on to Bucknell and competed at the state level and 
I squeaked out a closer one, a little bit too close for our comfort, but <laughs> he, uh, he definitely uh, showed his class again. Uh, a lot harder to defend a title than to win a title, I've always thought. And uh, you know, he had a target on his back all season, but um, the things that we saw down at the pool this year are you know, mind-boggling. Hopefully you got a chance to see um, Joey dive because it really was special to see that. And um, he's a three-time county champion as well. And uh, he'll be continuing his diving career at the University of Pittsburgh. So we're very, very proud of him. Congratulations. To you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 3.45 on April 12th for St. Charles. Well, it's a 4 o'clock start, but at 3.45 on the 12th, actually, uh, Mr. Scoot is going to come tomorrow and install the sign. Um, I'm going to take a ride back. I have a couple spots I was looking at, but I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put it. But tomorrow, we're going to put the sign up tomorrow, and we're going to have like an unveiling or a dedication prior to the game on April the 12th with hopefully the weather cooperating because this week it's not going to cooperate too well. So at April the 12th. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. I mean, coaches and students, you're more than welcome to stay for a whole entire meeting, or you're more than welcome to leave. We're not affected either way. I, we completely understand busy schedules and everything. <laughs> um, we have a construction update. Um, Mr. Ingles. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Um, Dr. Harris, can we get, can we get a picture? Oh, yes. George, George, yeah, hold on. Yeah, we, we need a picture. We need a picture for the website. George is George here. We have George here. Oh, George. 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 We have Georgia. You want our coaches and the kids? Oh, yes. In front of the beautiful wall. She goes in front of the band. Do we not pay the light bill? There's half of it. There's lights. In front of the lights. Other one, too. On your side. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Uh, give the construction update. Before we start, I do want to uh, thank Hank from Axis Architecture. Hank donated, um, I don't even know what you call it, Hank, the 2016 uh, brick stone. What's I that called? The cornerstone. Cornerstone. So he, uh, Hank and his uh, firm donated that. 
Uh, it's 2016, obviously, to show that that's whenever the project uh, was completed. Hopefully it's completed in 2016. And, uh, so we thought it was appropriate to put it over by the annex because that's where a significant amount of work was done. We already have two of those uh, years. I think a 72 and a 97 is in the main entrance, so we put a 2016 over there. So thank you, Hank. Appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview. We did, uh, I think we reported on this last month, but the, the annex has been take, it's taken over. We, we're, we're using it now for the basketball program, volleyball program. We're doing the, uh, the fitness uh, center has been, been used quite a bit by the phys ed teams, the athletic teams, even our staff members have been using it, so it's turned out uh, real well. Uh, the auditorium had its real, real test uh, this past weekend with the, with the musical The Princess and the Pea was performed there, so if anybody hasn't seen it, we still have two more shows this weekend. So don't be afraid to uh, show up. Uh, anyway, the feedback that we got was, was very good. The sound, the lighting, uh, the kids did a great job. So I think everybody's very happy with the facility. So um, uh, we're pleased with it so far. So hopefully it all works out and we'll continue to have some great performances there for a long time. Um, you guys did a great job with that. So thanks, Hank, for, for working on that with us. Um, we do have some change orders. The total uh, amounts to approximately twenty-nine thousand um, dollars. Renee, do you want to touch base with those a little bit and go over those, or Hank? I don't know which ones do up for that. I can do it. Okay. I have, I have in front of me. There, there are several. There was um, we we visited the landscaping plan, and the contractor had made comments that the size trees that were specified he was having a hard time finding. So we. We reduced the size of the trees that were allowed and reduced from 94 to 90 trees, and that ended up being about a, just under a $6,000 credit to do that work. We, um, in the TV studio section, the, the production area, they, there's a section of this space that gets a, um, a blue screen painted on it, and the teacher had requested that it be a little larger, and some of it was meant to be concrete block that was painted and he said it would be better if it was all smooth so there's about a thousand dollar credit to add some drywall and finish that to get that painted um, there was another bearing wall that was found in the kitchen area when they did the demolition now this wall runs <laughs> perpendicular to all the other bearing walls in the, in the building the main bearing walls in the building run parallel with the corridors this one for some reason is perpendicular to the corridors it was in an area where there was a drywall, hard ceiling, so you couldn't get above it beforehand. When they took the ceiling out, the contractors found that it was running that way. So we looked at the possibility of changing the plan, but there really wasn't any way to change the plan. So the only option was to add a beam for that. That was about $4,500. There, um, the, there's a existing air intake over by the pool entrance or the um, athletic department entrance that is being abandoned and our understanding from Jim Bracco is that when you, there's a driven rain or a driven snow water would get into there and leak and since it's being abandoned the concept was to just cap it off that it's a large it, it, the change order is about two thousand dollars but it's a large opening it's ten by twelve it's it's big so that's why that number is that it's putting an insulated panel on that there, the auditorium smoke hatches. This is one we've talked about several other times. We had come with an estimate of about thirty to forty thousand dollars to do this. This is the one where the smoke hatches in the stage were not functioning. They've been, I guess, they've been wired closed and, and caulked and those types of things. And we looked at it to see if they could just be abandoned, but the code required them to be in. There were three existing. When we looked, when we did the calculations for the code, you only needed two of the three to be replaced. So this is to replace two of them and cap the third opening so they won't, they won't leak anymore. And that's, that's $26,000, so it came in substantially lower than what we had anticipated. One of the nice things was they're, they're actuated with a, with a heated fuse disconnect, so if, the, there's a, if, if there's a fire in the area, it creates heat, it melts a, a, a fusible link, and the doors open. So they didn't have to be also connected to the fire alarm system and controlled by the fire alarm system. So we were able to save money with the electrical contractor for those. Um, pull regular, regulator replacement. I guess uh, Jim Bracco had met with some, the contractors and there were some smaller lines, some half inch lines for some things in the pool that he said were sticking 
and, and he was having trouble with, and he said he was going to have to replace them anyway. We, we looked at while the, you have to drain the pool to replace these. The pool's drained, so the thought was do it while the pool's drained. We got a price from the contractors, it's about $1,300. And those are the change orders. And to clarify, you know, I, I was thinking, I talked to the world about this executive session about the pricing of that pool regular. I was thinking, but is that, that's not the chlorine tank that we're. <coughs> no, that's, that's a different one that's, that's, that's there. The, the, this one is for actual regulators. They're, they're, they're electronic switches that, that allow water to go in and out at different levels and those types right. of things. And, and there's some, and they're also being, uh, we're also putting some ball valves on them to separate them. So if there's anything happens in the future, they can get easy access to them. There's also another potential, Mr. Bracco wanted something for the chlorine, to put it inside the building and uh, regulate the chlorine levels. And are you, are you with what I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Does that, is that part of this also? Is that why these regulators needed to be replaced? No, these regulators were, Ed told Pyramid while they were on a punch list, walked in, he needed them done. That's what okay. transpired. I just wanted to clarify, because I know there were some other work. <clears throat> the, the, the one that I know regarding the, the big chlorine tanks was sure. once the chlorine tanks were removed from their location, drained and removed, you could see that there was some deterioration on the pool wall because, because of spillage of the chlorine. The chlorine has deteriorated some of the concrete on the, on the outside of the wall there. And then caused some deterioration of some rebar there. So we did a sketch, we brought a structural engineer out to look at that as a sketch to repair some of that, but we don't have any pricing on that yet. It's not, a, it won't be a large number, but. Adding, adding a tank or doing some work there, but I think he was doing that out of his, out of his budget. So that's where I'm getting confusion, so sorry about yeah, that. Okay. He's gonna move that tank outside of the building. Right, that's what it was, yeah. Um, and we are, we're, you know, as we're talking here, obviously we're doing a lot of uh, work in the pool. We just started the pool, the pool work here the last week or two. Um, we're doing extensive work in the kitchen, as, as was, was said, and uh, the training room. Those are really the only three areas that we're focusing on right now, but those are big areas where there's a lot of work to be and done. And the outside is going to start picking up now. The, the site place, work, yes. Right. The site is going to start planting the trees this week, probably, or next week. They, they were, that was the schedule, but at the meeting today they talked about wanting to spread the topsoil first. Right. And that has to dry out a little bit before they can spread it. Anything else? I didn't have anything else. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Glaze. Um, do you have anything else for going? No. Anything else? No, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, the one thing I do want to say is the contingency is sitting at $298,000. So that, that, that figure is accurate. Okay? $298,000. We have about four months left in the project. I'm going to give you an update from the Penn Traffic Community Education Foundation. Our next meeting is May 11th at 6.30 at the high school library. We are still seeking new members to be a part of our committee. We are a small board, they're very productive. Um, we've probably raised close to 200000 since we started. Um, all that money goes for classroom grants and supplies, things for our teachers need. And, but again, we are a very small board, perhaps 11 members. And, but we can have up to 16. So if you know of anybody who wants to join the board, please come off that evening. We just passed out April 1st, um, $18,000 worth of teacher grants. So a lot of, we have about 22 teachers receive the grants um, in various amounts throughout the district. <coughs> we got to take those grants and pass it out to the teachers. All teachers were very happy. And it seems like for some reason we always do this on April Fool's Day. I'm not sure why we show up, but it always seems to be the case when we go to the room and they're always asking, oh, is this for real? And this, yeah, it is. So, like I said, so please come join our foundation. Our latest edition of the Perspectives if you, was sent out last week in the Penn Trafford News. They did an excellent job um, working with us to get the Perspectives sent out to all the uh, families. So every single person, even if you don't get a subscription, you actually received one that day, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate Georgia Boring for all her help for this process. But if you did not receive a prospectus, I'll have, <laughs> we have some extra left over, so does anyone in the audience still need one? No? All right, let's have some more. But it was, we got a lot of good feedback from it, so I really appreciated everyone's time who worked on it for the season. Um, as Scott mentioned earlier, Once Upon a Mattress, 
this past weekend. I said and the Princess and the Pea. Didn't you I? said the Princess and the Pea. That's okay. It's the same thing, right? Almost. It's based on the story of the same Princess and the Pea, yeah. but it's the uh, Once Upon a Night. <laughs> That's close. Um, excellent, excellent show. I'm not just saying that because my son was in it, but I, I saw it three times. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll see you for two more. Right? <laughs> That's exactly. But I'm doing it in five different sections. So I'm seeing each section of the auditorium so I can get a feel for how everything <coughs> looks and sounds. So really good job. Of it. They just do an amazing job. Everything we do from entertainment down to our sports, down to our academics, the kids always make me so proud. And it's always so nice to see what the kids do. So it's just outstanding. <coughs> and speaking about our kids, the last one I have is um, a bus driver. He took the kids to Virginia for the percussion team. He actually wrote me a handwritten note. I haven't received a handwritten letter in a long time through the mail, so it's kind of nice to see that. It's great. It's, on a, it's actually on a bus <laughs> inspection report. <laughs> <laughs> That is on the back of it. But I really appreciate it. I, mean, I got this. I was like, this is really nice. But he wanted to say how great the kids were and how much polite they were going down and how much fun they were. And he actually went down and saw the show. And he said he never experienced something like that before. But when he went in, he said the, the performance was outstanding. And remember, this is the one they did where they were like mad scientists and some aliens and they had a sci-fi theme. They really did an excellent job with it. So it was really nice to see. It's always great to get good feedback from our kids. I think that's all I have under information. All right, next week under athletics and extracurricular, we're gonna ask you employee personnel, approve volunteer coaches. Under budget and finance, we're going to approve expenditures related to the high school renovation according to the schedule. And these are items that Scott talked about earlier. Approved change orders, as I mentioned earlier, um, and information. Award the WIU 7 bid as recommended by the WIU Joint Purchasing Consortium. I know Dallas kind of mentioned some things about the IU earlier during um, special reports. And we're going to ask you to approve a firewall as well as a camera lease. I know the camera lease is not there, but that's one thing we need to add because we also have information on that. The firewall was actually, in, and the camera lease are both according to the budget, but due to the big ticket item and the cost, we actually have to put it on for um, the agenda. Under buildings, grounds, and safety, we won't have anything to report. Under employee relations, negotiations, transportation, we won't have anything to report. But under food sort services, the two sort of go together. First, we're going to talk about um, granting permission to opt out of the National School Lunch Program at the Penn Trafford High School for the 2016-2017 school year. Did anyone else have any thoughts about that or receive any information from anyone? Because I know we, the press covered it in the story. Um, I've had a lot of good comments from parents saying that they was hoping that we would definitely approve it. I know the students sent us um, they signed about how many kids trying to sign? I, I wasn't a part of that, but I knew it was a lot of seniors and especially upperclassmen that were in support of this. Yeah, it was 500. I believe it was 500 or even more, so that was, and that was impressive. So we do have a lot of um, support for moving it out of the um, National School Lunch <coughs> Program. And, and I just have one comment. Um, we were, apparently the state uh, read the article in the paper and sent us a notice that that constitutes a material change to our contract. So instead of us uh, just renewing our contract with Aramark for another year, we actually have to go through the process of issuing the RFP and doing a bid. So that's why we're doing it. Not because we're dissatisfied with Aramark, but because the state put us on notice. Thanks to the paper, we we were, <laughs> we were able. Hey, you know what? Quite honestly, it is good. Thanks to someone, so we can make sure we're doing everything like right, right and legal. And that's why we have number two. If we do number one, then we have to do number two. So it's, it kind of goes together. For us, if we do it that's not pretty funny, man. <laughs> just caught that. Oh boy. <laughs> personnel and curriculum. Approve um, substitute teachers and support personnel. Authorize Act 80 days for 2016 2017. Approve leave request. Um, approve the textbook, textbook purchase. Remember, we have been piloting all year or half a year. Um, the Envision Math Series. This is the updated version to the one we used um, prior that actually did the district very well. 
Remember, like the longest time our elementary school will always remain number one for mathematics. With the new adoption of the new change in curriculum and state alignment, our old textbook series wasn't meeting the needs of the new um, standards. And we were doing a lot of different resources. We were, every school seemed to be sort of not, not really following the same methods, but basically because we were trying to find so many different resources that we were using everything we could just to um, meet the needs of the students. <coughs> this series seemed to do the trick, seemed to do everything we wanted to do. We were lucky enough to be able to pilot it for three months before we actually had to make the purchase. Most, dish, um, most companies don't actually do that. But during the last few months, we have been piloting it. It seems to be more in line with the standards and the regulations and what we want to do. So it's probably what time to make the commitment. This is K to five, and this is with our textbook cycle. We do have a textbook cycle, which every year we dedicate certain amounts of money. Normally at the high school level and the middle school, we've been doing away with a lot of our textbooks because we've been buying things, incorporating new forms. But for, ele for elementary, I told you this last year when we did reading, Reading and math, we still want a foundation, we still want a series. And we believe in that. And this series, or all the bells and whistles, is $157,871.93. But, like I said, it is budgeted into our textbook cycle, and that's why you put that money away each year so we have it. Quick question, just, just for information. Sure. That book right laying right there, what's that one book cost, roughly? <clears throat> oh, quite honestly, Every grade level is a little bit different, Mr. Leonard. Said so one book, I would believe, eighty-eight ninety-seven. Yeah. And we talked about the price. This of the is books. no no comment on whether the book's worth anything or not. It's just a comment on what what this stuff costs. These paper stuff costs, and, and the other types of technologies that are available it helps put it in perspective when we're making decisions. Yeah. Some of our um, hardback books and <coughs> textbooks, especially for the high school. It could easily go from 120 to 144. I've seen them as well over $100 for one single pick. And as the kids go to college, they're going to find out that that's probably <laughs> half of the price and, of one of your textbooks. And I've written checks for numbers far yeah. higher. You're going to have. <clears throat> so it is a good series. A lot of good input. A lot of good teachers. You counted it, and I do appreciate all their time. And then we're also going to ask you to deploy personnel. Under policy, public relations, legislative, Title II, we're going to ask you to accept and follow Information Committee meeting minutes on March 7, 2016. Taxes, census, insurance census, we don't have anything to report. And at this time, we don't have any recognition of visitors. Nobody there. There's no one there, so you don't have to read the statement. <laughs> so I guess uh, that's it. We're going to move for adjournment. Um, Trent, are you supposed to speak with this one or next tonight? time? I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> But did we agree? Because I know Mrs. Oliver, we've been going back and forth to decide which meeting he was coming to. I'm still not coming to both meetings. I don't care which one I speak at. Okay. And was, I mean, maybe you could speak at both, Trent. I'm sorry. Speak at both. I think it would make more sense for me to speak in an information meeting though, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.